Hey everybody, Thomas here. And I'm here with my dad. Uh, the fine folks from Kinsaw Supply Company, they sent us some blades and everything to test out. It's something I've been wanting to do for a while and everything. Uh, my buddy Neil has run these blades and he absolutely loves them. But Mr. Robert uh, from Kinsaw sent us these blades and everything. He said, hey, give me your honest opinion. What are these blades are? Run them through their test, uh, through their paces and everything and let me know. First things first, we're gonna look on the outside of the box. This right here tells you all the information you really need to know in your box. So I like how they have this because you can have these boxes up on a rack and everything and show you what you got going on here. They're an inch and a quarter inch wide. The thickness is 0 0.041 inches thick and the tooth spacing is 7 8 These blades here are 14 foot, 10 inches, 10 and a half inches, and there's 10 blades in the box. The other cool thing is these run a 10 degree hook angle, which is a great all around blade. Uh, if you're cutting from softwoods to hardwoods, um, but also if you sharpen your own blade, you can always take that out and, and decrease that if you're going to cut some hard stuff, like frozen logs and, and specialize in hardwoods. I also asked them to send me some business cards. So they sent me a, a nice packet of business cards here, which is great. And I'm going to put this information in the video as well. Yeah, Mr. Robert McMillan, he sent me these. He's a general manager there at uh, Kennesaw. And supply company um, they're in white Georgia but I'll put this information in the video but let's go ahead and look at some of these blades here real quick first things first uh, the way that they pack the blades I know you really can't see from the angle there but they do put these sheets between sets of blades which is really nice um, the blades themselves I don't know if you can see it this well in the video but it is a hardened tooth blade the tips of the teeth are hardened down nearly to the gullet uh, on the outside of the blade, you can definitely tell there is a film on there. So I like that they're, they're putting some type of oil material on there to prevent these blades from rusting. So over time, if these blades sit up on the shelf for, say, six months to a year or something like that, they're not going to rust on you. So when you pull these out the box, you have a brand, brand new blade. I can see the weld right there. It's a nice, uh, smooth area right there. and looks like they do a good job there. Now, there's no discernible marks on the outside of the blade. On the inside of the blade... Is where we have some markings i'm trying to find it right here so it'll tell you the batch number this came out of batch three five one three four or no three five one three tech nine and it tells you again the the size of the blade so it's an inch and a quarter blade point zero four one inches and seven eighths pitch uh, it also tells you it says mumford on here so these are Mumford Sauger blade stock material. So the, um, that's a fine blade right there. Uh, the Mumford Sauger blade, uh, they, they, they actually make the blade material. And then the folks at Kennesaw, they can go ahead and cut it to whatever profile and then uh, make it to whatever length you're needing. So yeah, so dad, you, you've run this blade now. You've run three of these blades. I've run three of these blades. When I got my box in, I was really excited. Because uh, I was frankly getting to the end of life for several of the blades. Yeah, he was blowing up blades. I was breaking blades every few. time. Every time I put one on, so <laughs> I put some, put one on. I cut some hardwood with the first blade, and the last two blades I had a big pine order, and I've been cutting pine. Uh, for the pine, I was averaging about 600 board feet per blade, which is that's pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. That's pretty good. Now I could, I could, uh, I felt the blade. It, it felt a little bit duller after 600. I'm sure I could have gone further. I didn't go all the way until it fails or anything. Yeah, we, that's uh, that's the thing. You, you never really want to push your blade all the way to failure. By only stopping at like 600 or so board foot, you still have life in that blade to sharpen it. If you're stressing a blade and running it like a 1,000 board foot, you're, you're taking off sharpening cycles off that blade. And, and generally what we've found in the past with other blades is that we could sharpen them five or six times yeah. before they start uh, failing on yep. you. I do run them to failure. Uh, haven't had any problems with that, but but they can be a little bit dangerous whenever they fail. Yeah. It, well, every time you blow up a blade, it's just like it's like almost like a shotgun going off, but you weren't expecting it. Sometimes you can hear the ticking in it beforehand. Um, but yeah, so he's run three of these blades. Now, one of the things I'll say is also the shipping. From the time I talked to uh, Mr. Robert there. Um, I want to say we got these blades in like three days. Three days. So three days is pretty impressive. I know I talked to, or had texted some folks uh, from the Bandsaw Talk group on Facebook and some mm -hmm. other ones. They were looking for blades. And another guy on there said he was in South Carolina and he got the blades in two days. We're up in, I'm in Wisconsin. He's in Tennessee. 
I, we got them, I believe, the same day. So I got them here in three days as well, which is pretty impressive. So the fast turnaround of the blades is really nice. Um, my buddy Neil, he has the same thing to say about these blades. I have not run one of these blades yet, and that's what we're going to show you in the rest of this video. But, you know, Dad's run three of these blades. He's happy with them thus far. He pretty much said, I want to order some more of these. So that's, yeah. that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to order some more of these so he can continue that. But, um, yeah, the, the fine folks there, they, they did send us these blades. So... Full truth in lending, these blades were sent to us to test, and I'm going to give you my honest assessment. I have run Cook's blades, I've run Woodmiser blades, I've run Timber King, Ultramax, and Ultras, and then now I'm running these blades right here. Um, what I'm going to do in a later video, not on this video, this video is going to be we're going to run these blades, I'll give you my honest assessment at the end, and we're going to get show some videos of how they're cutting and the cut quality. Has the cut quality been pretty good? The cut quality is excellent. Uh, sometimes, you know, with some of the blades, after you've resharpened them, if they're not sharpened exactly right, you'll have some chattering on, on the on the yeah. wood. You can see it. The, these were, honestly, the folks that I sold the wood to were very impressed with it. So one thing I'll say, I, when I talked to Mr. Robert, he said they, they set their blades at 20 thousandths. Um, so 20 thousandths is good. Mr. Robert in Mississippi, we usually set around 22 thousandths, plus or minus three. So 20 thousandths is de definitely within that uh, range there and everything. I can definitely feel the set. I've gone around, looked at this. You see a discernible set up tooth, down tooth, straight tooth. Um, and then around the weld, they do a good job at making sure that you're not ending on a kind of a weird set. So yeah, so without further ado, we're gonna fast forward because dad's gotta get on the road. We've been up here for a couple days working on the shop or the sawmill building. The sawmill building is nearly done with the exception over here. Somehow I miscounted 10 and came up like five sheets short. I don't know how I did that, but long, long story short, we got the building for the most part done and we've been doing a lot of fishing. So we've had five days of putting up sawmill, building in the morning, fishing in the afternoon. He caught a fish in a lifetime. We caught a muskie, which I'm going to post a video of that. It's a short little video, but he caught a 40 something inch muskie off a kayak on top water <laughs> in the Peshtigo <laughs> River. It was awesome. That's a once a lot. That's a fish of 10,000 casts and he caught it in less than a hundred. <laughs> So, but, and then also we caught a pink salmon and a whole lot of smallmouth. We had a birthday party with kids out there in the water. So it was a great time, but we're here about blades. So we're going to talk about blades. So stay tuned. We're going to start running these blades. I'll show you the putting the blade on and we're going to look at some cut quality and a whole lot of videos of me cutting with this blade. I'm going to kind of track the number of board foot I'm getting on this blade. And then I'm also going to look at the hour meter on the sawmill and see if I can correlate the two. Okay, folks, what we have here is 19 inches, 19 inches at the long, at the widest, 114 inches long. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just slab it up. I'm going to do some inch and a half stuff, probably switch up to two inches. I need some material for benches and some cutting boards and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and start slabbing it up and see how she does.
through that knock section decently quick. No change in the height there. Stayed pretty true. So it's looking flogged over. We're going to be cutting through some knock sections.
color, this is going to be a beautiful pitch. up with this stuff let's go ahead and throw some water on here unfortunately I'm losing light so we'll go ahead and throw some water on here clean this piece up we'll look at the cut quality and then I'll throw in a hyperlapse and be cutting up the rest of this okay so now let's put some water on here see what she really looks like and look at this cut quality and talk about what we see Pretty all right. All right, so the water will help bring out anything in the actual cut quality so we can see it better. Let's go to this hardest section here where we were starting to load up before we got into this section right here. You can see a few lines there, nothing major. That's totally normal for blades. And I was loading up into that decently quick i'll say that through this knot section right here nice and clean let's see if we can see anything closer not really the blade looks good um this knot section right here again you see these striations here in the wood that's from the uh the blade loading up and maybe getting a little bit shattered because i was going too fast but that's fine down here at the end it's a bit punky over here so nothing to really see there the hard sections that i want to see or where it loaded up here in these knot sections. And it looks good. Now some of these cuts, as you saw, I was going a little bit faster than I normally go. But again, I'm wanting to test out this wood, or this blade, excuse me, and see how she performs. If we look, that's nice and flat. There is no deviation. The blade did not dip or dive or rise or anything like that. It stayed nice and true because, you know, you can usually run your hand across there and you could feel any kind of imperfections. The only thing I feel is in this section right here when we're loading up into this knot, I do see a little bit more um, of where the teeth were grabbing. And that was probably some chatter that was in the blade. And what I can do to counteract that is I can also run the blade a little bit, you know, higher tension. Right now, uh, I'm running about 1,200 PSI. Maybe I'll bump it up to 1400 PSI, something like that. Blade feels insanely sharp, like it hasn't even been cut. I mean, that's like, let me show you how sharp this is. Zoom in for that. Good old finger test. She's sharp still, plenty sharp. But again, I've only made one, two, three, four cuts. So not too bad. All right, so let me go and throw in a time lapse. We'll continue cutting this up and we'll look at all the pieces here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw in multiple time lapses where we're cutting up multiple pieces of maple. And then we'll throw some other woods on here. Now, again, this is at 19 inches wide. Down there, it's probably about 18 inches wide. And at the very start there, I think it was 16 and a half inches so this is not a small log by any stretch of the imagination. This is a rather wide, large, and like we said, it was uh, just under 10 foot. All right, so let's go ahead and do a few more time-lapse cuts. Also, I want to put the time-lapse on the right side as you're looking at the mill right now. So you can see the sawdust that's coming off of this. It's always a great indicator if you see a solid stream of sawdust. That means you have very good set and you want uh, larger chunks rather than fine chunks because that means that your blade is sharp. So I'm going to throw the time lapse on, probably looking straight down. Notice that sawdust trail that's leaving the exhaust. All right, folks, there you have it. I'm very happy the way these look. This is absolutely beautiful wood. Uh, the cut quality is great and everything. And one of the things we're looking at is like, okay, how can we best determine how long a blade 
has remained sharp and how long or how much wood has it cut. I looked at doing by board footage and board footage really won't tell you the, the truth because these slabs right here vary in thickness. So because they vary in thickness, it doesn't give you a true representation of what we're actually cutting. Now I could cut the same amount or same thickness on the next log, but really it won't be the same because they're different lengths and there's too many variables. So the best way I think I can calculate how much a blade has run is to calculate the surface area the blade has run through a log. So this right here, when you calculate this up, you come up with roughly 90 square feet of surface area. So 90 square feet is how much this blade has run through this log. Now over my pile over here, I've got a couple more maple logs over there. I believe there's, in total, I think I'm gonna have four or five logs. Now this blade should have no problem cutting through those four or five logs. And three of the logs are about the same size. They're 18 to 20 inches. And there's one that's a little bit less, and it's but it's longer. So this is gonna be the part one of a multi-part series. But this right here, this is the introduction to the blade from Kennesaw. Um, I'm very happy with the performance thus far, but it is a brand new blade. It's cutting like a brand new blade should. Now we're gonna say or see how well it does in the long run. How does it compare to other blades? Now, one of the things we didn't show in the video, and we did talk to the company, they stated that the blades are set at 20 thousandths. So that's a check what we need to do in the beginning. I'm gonna check another blade here too, and I'll be cutting more as well, but we're gonna cut, or we're gonna check the the set on the blade at 20 thousandths, and then we're going to see how long that set stays in there. So this deals with the spring material that's used, the metal that's used, and, and how well it holds its set, because that's something right there that will decrease the amount of wood you can cut. As your set decreases, your sawdust will become finer and finer, and that blade's working harder and harder to get through that wood, because you're not pulling out uh, as, much, as much material, and just making everything work harder. So we're gonna look at how many square foot, what's the square footage of how long a blade will cut until it's deemed to be dull. Then we're gonna measure what the set is on that blade once it's deemed to be dull. And then we're gonna have to see what we can do to measure sharpness. I, I don't really think sharpness is gonna be a, a, a good factor, but then we're gonna see how the blade resharpens and how well we can get a set back in there and all that, this, that, and the other. So for right now, opening video, I'm very pleased that the company is giving the opportunity to, to test their blades and I'm trying to test it as, you know, uh, without as, as without any biases. I, I, have, I have no connection to this company other than the fact that they gave me these blades and everything, but I wanna do the due diligence and test these blades accordingly. Um, so far, like I said, I'm happy with them and we'll see how they perform. I'm hoping they perform well. I like the profile. We're also gonna match these blades up down the road to some other blades from other companies. And we're gonna see, like, we'll do a little shootout. Let's see who does the best. So what I need to do really is do this same video for each different type of blade I get and then kind of compare them at the end to figure out which one's the quote unquote king. So stay tuned, please like, subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments or if you have something you'd like to see done with these blades, let me know because I'm trying to improve the channel and get good information out there that people will enjoy. Right now, I'm gonna just enjoy this wood. I cannot wait to make some stuff out of this. This is, I think this is one of my favorite slabs of this whole piece. I don't know why, but that one screams like, make me into a bench. And then, I don't know, there's there's beautiful figure up here. I like it. So, yeah, very happy to be up here. And folks, if you haven't seen the colors up here, oh my goodness, take a look at that. Those colors are awesome. I'm. So excited, all these maple trees around here. Not only do they have beautiful wood on the outside, I love the colors that they produce. Again, please like, subscribe, we'll see you around, thanks.